Coming up on Mountain News this morning, severe storms are forecast to strike once again today in the southeast. If you thought March was warm, you may be on to something. We will tell you what the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration has to say about it. Plus, we will show you how students at the Southeast Kentucky Community and Technical College learned how to act in a disaster scenario. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News This Morning. Good morning. It is 632 on Friday, April the 19th. I'm Will Puckett. Thank you for tuning in to Mountain News this morning. Well, if you need to pick me up, may need a little extra coffee, tea or soda or whatever gets you going in the morning because this rain is sure to keep you down. Brandon's got a better breakdown of what to expect. And Brandon, there are some people to the south of us, significantly to the south of us, who are seeing mm -hmm. some severe weather this morning. Absolutely. Tornado warning in parts of northern uh, Virginia, northern Georgia this morning, but Virginia and a lot of other states under the gun today for that severe weather. So we're going to continue to track that here at home. We're just tracking heavier bands of rain. Live pinpoint Doppler radar as we head out the door this morning. You can see the, a little bit of a radar tour here. Heavy rain down south. So if you're traveling toward Williamsburg, on I-75, 25W, pretty soggy down that way all the way into East Tennessee across Jellicoe Mountain, Harlan over into Southwest Virginia, all the way up toward Hazard into Letcher County, all the way up toward uh, Pike County there as well. We're seeing heavier bands of rain, so just be careful this morning. Ponding water, a real issue on some of those roads and visibility as well. Still close to 70 in the Big Sandy up toward Ashland and Logan, but down into the uh, upper 50s and low 60s across parts of Southern Kentucky. Visibility again decreasing where the areas of heavy rain are, five miles or less which is Middlesbrough, Harlan, and Wise, heavy uh, fog or dense visibility. So just a dense pro uh, visibility issues. There we go. Get the words out this morning. 12-hour planner. We'll see temperatures slowly decrease today, and we'll see those showers continue off and on into the rest of the daytime hours. Full forecast on the way in a few minutes. Will? All righty, Brandon. Thank you. Well, wicked weather heading into the weekend. That is what people in the south, the Ohio Valley region, and the east coast should expect today. John Lawrence has more. Severe storms leaving destruction in their wake in places like Hopperus Cove, Texas. Just kept getting louder like a freight train was going over the house, you know. And the house was shaking. You can see what it did to the doors and the trees out here. Alvin Johnson's house and cars both suffered damage. We got our life, we have our health, you know, and just thank God that, you know, it wasn't hurt. That's the main thing. Rain and strong wind gusts in the Waco area. And throughout parts of the Lone Star State, down trees and power lines. All I could think was, man, Mother Nature. The crazy thing is, today I was planning to mow the backyard. The National Weather Service reporting at least one tornado in Mississippi Thursday. That's where two cars in a Clinton Walmart parking lot were flipped onto their sides. Arkansas, meanwhile, is dealing with floodwaters. These storms are heading east Friday, expecting to affect about 100 million people from Georgia all the way to Maine. Trees, you make sure your power lines are clear and keep them trimmed back. You know, that's the main thing. Be proactive ahead of time before something happens. Forecasters say the worst of this weather should be gone by Saturday morning. That's when the cold front connected to these storms should push offshore. I'm John Lawrence reporting. Now, authorities confirm at least two weather-related deaths in Mississippi and one in Alabama. Now, if you thought last month felt a bit warmer than usual, you're not alone. The National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration says last month was the second hottest March on record for the entire planet. Only March of 2016 was hotter. NOAA also says the first quarter of this year, that's January, February and March, was the third warmest on record for the globe. Analysts say this could be a sign of how climate change is affecting Earth. Malware attack briefly kicked the Weather Channel off air Thursday morning. The network said in a tweet that federal law enforcement is investigating what went down. The Weather Channel's morning show AMHQ was scheduled to start at 6. Anchors were not on air until more than an hour later to explain what exactly happened. They also apologize for any inconvenience to viewers. The network is currently covering severe spring weather threats across the United States. A presidential declaration has been made for the state of Kentucky. A major disaster in the state is being recognized by President Trump. Road crews in more than 50 counties can expect federal assistance to help repair roads damaged by recent severe weather. WMT's Taylor Upchurch has more from Letcher County. Water will cut its way through anything. 
From February to March, water swept in, taking over nearly 60 Kentucky counties. <laughs> Everything's sitting down. It's just the water is just it's too much water. Storms, strong winds, flooding, and several slides set many eastern Kentucky communities back. We're on short supply. We're running out of everything. After receiving a letter from Governor Matt Bevin, President Trump agreed to declare disaster. Crews say any help from FEMA is appreciated. I don't know. We're just, our budget's stressed out. We don't have enough men, actually. And we just try to do what we can do. And we, you know, FEMA steps in the, with contractors and stuff, we can get more done. Kentucky Transportation Cabinet officials estimated repair costs for just this seven-county state highway district to sit at more than $11 million. This major break in the road along Kentucky 1103 in Line Fork is just one of several. And this one's probably the worst one. Crews expect to fix places hit the hardest first. From there, smaller projects will follow. Around here, when the rain comes, it comes. Most of these roads are ancient. <laughs> they, you know, they've been maintained, but they're just too much area and not enough people. Thankful for extra money and helping hands. In Letcher County, Taylor Upchurch, WYMT Mountain News. Crews say they expect to have a better idea of how much the damage will cost once examiners assess the area in the coming weeks. Well, students at the Southeast Kentucky Community and Technical College in Middlesboro learned how to act in a disaster scenario. The nursing students collaborated with law enforcement and first responders to act out a mock disaster. The scenario was that a plane supposedly hit part of the Middlesboro campus, spreading their mock disaster across a large part of campus, both inside and out, which taught students how to react in a real disaster. It's also an opportunity, though, especially to learn that collaboration, to know that you're a team and that you're not just one person standing alone. The mock disaster was part of the nursing students' last skills exam to pass the program. Now let's head to some international news this morning. A 6.1 magnitude earthquake struck Taiwan's coastal city of Hualien in on Thursday, shaking buildings and temporarily halting subway services in the capital Taipei. But there were no immediate reports of serious damage or deaths. While small scale power cuts were reported in some districts in Taipei, the central news agency said oil refinery plants and services were operating as normal. That's according to the government. Well, we are learning about what caused the devastating fire at the Notre Dame Cathedral. Investigators are now saying an electrical short circuit likely caused the blaze. Officials also say investigators still have not gotten approval to work in the cathedral and search the rubble for safety reasons. The cathedral's rector has proposed building a small temporary church on the plaza outside the monument so people have a place to worship as the building undergoes repairs. A Bell County father and son face charges in a sex abuse case. Police arrested 73-year-old John Hoskins and 33-year-old Travis Hoskins yesterday morning. State police tell us two girls reported the men sexually abused them. Both were younger than 14 at the time. John and Travis Hoskins face first-degree sexual abuse, incest, and other charges. Three people are facing charges in Powell County following a barricade situation. Police say the situation started around 5 yesterday morning in Clay City. A man came home from work overnight when another man confronted him in front of the house. He left and called police. Police then showed up and closed off Shiloh Road. After about six hours of negotiations, police say Tommy Petrie, Donna Lewis and Regina Wishman walked out of the house. Well, it's 640. Let's toss it over to Brandon. He'll give you what to expect as you walk out your door on this good Friday. It's going to be kind of a rough Friday weather-wise, but don't let that deter you from uh, celebrating today. And we're looking again at the rain across the area. We're going to continue to track that in waves throughout the day, so just kind of keep that in mind. Live pinpoint Doppler radar showing those heavier bands there indicated by the yellows and oranges and darker greens. And it's about half of the area. If you're back to the north and to the west, you're getting a pretty good little break right now. Temperatures still close to 70. Ashland, Logan, Prestonsburg, but falling down into parts of Lake Cumberland, I-75, and most of the region down into the low 60s and upper 50s. The out the door forecast, we are going to see those rain chances continue off and on today and those temperatures slowly fall, getting into the 50s by later tonight across the region. Will? All righty, Brandon. Thank you, sir. Well, we will have stories trending on WIMT.com next. As always, thank you for joining us right here on Mountain News this morning.